Yeah. I've... Is it videoing now? It is indeed. Hi. This is a rundown of the business ordinary level paper for the people in the manor who are doing ordinary level business and are in any way worried about it. They go through the paper, and the reason I'm doing this on the internet is because there isn't time to do it with you, so I'm doing it virtually instead. Here's an example of a past business paper. Once again, I'm videoing this on Clodagh's phone. Hi. Yeah. Because it's the handiest way to get online quick without much hassle. Yeah, she works at Spirit Radio. Very good. She's a big, powerful DJ Hi. type. Well done, me. Yeah. And there's the baboon. It is a bad baboon. You're not bad. There's a picture on the wall there. And there she is. Oh, I can't see it. The lights are on it. Yeah, there she is. Baboon, away. Away. <laughs> now the paper. <clears throat> Business order level. There's an example of the paper from 2011. And um, you have, first we'll go through the paper. There's, the short questions are worth 100 marks, one quarter of the paper. And there's 15 of them. And you have to do 10. But once again, you're better off to just do the whole 15 because you'll probably get time to do them and it increases your chances of maximising your score there. So you may as well do the whole 15 and see how you go. You never know your luck. Then you have the section 2 which is the long questions. And the way these are laid out is a little bit complicated in that section 2 has part 1 which has question 1, 2 and 3 in it. And it also has part 2 which is question 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 in it. Now the rules of the long questions, you have to do 4. Are you making that thing hyper? <laughs> you want to calm down now while I'm doing this? Bad bone. Lie down! Oh, no, no. Keep it there. Yeah, I will. Right. Uh, in the long questions, uh, you need to do... One question out of part one, this section, question one, two, or three. Then once you've done that, you've got to do two questions out of that part, part two. So two questions out of any from four up as far as eight. And then once you've got those three questions done, so that's one from quest section, you know, part one, and another two from part two, then you can come back and do your fourth question from any of the long questions at all. So if you choose your fourth and final question can be another question out of this section or else another question out of that section. But the requirement is there must be at least one from that section and at least two from that section and your fourth one you've got free choice from, from any of those long questions. Okay, now to quickly show you how ridiculously nice and easy this paper is I'll look first of all at a few of the short questions. Um, first of all, you have... Uh, short questions like this, like question 3, question 7, question 13, and question 15. Those four questions, what they have in common is they're all kind of like tick the box questions. Like there's different um, things you might have in a business. And to finance these things, would you use short term finance, medium term finance, or long term finance? And you, you just tick whichever one you think it is so you've got a good chance of guessing it right even if you're unsure. Um, same here there are some statements and you write either true or false after them. Handy. And question 13 is uh, another one where there are certain terms and their explanations and you match up the explanation with the terms in this grid down here. Uh, same story with this one here where you have to say would these things make an increase or a decrease? You just write the word increase or decrease. So they're really handy questions that, even if you're not sure, you have a guess at those ones because they're just, you know, handy. Uh, other easy questions are things like explain the term investor and give two examples of investors. Um, so most people would be aware that an investor is someone who gives money towards some kind of business project or something. And your examples, if you're totally stuck and if you've ever seen The Apprentice or Dragon's Den or one of these things, just go with investors from those programs. Um, okay. There's one there, another one that's quite doable. Um, capacity contract is the ability of the person to enter into a legal contract. There's three situations where the person does not have capacity contract. Now you can give creative answers there. Just rack your brains and think of any kind of situation where someone would not be able to go into a contract. Like, if they're dead, 
they can't go into a contract because they're dead. Or if they're too young, if you're under 18, you can't go into a legal contract. Or if you happen to be drunk at the time when you're making the contract. Or um, if you are a dog. Or, you know, just creative answers are fine there. Like, make sure you get three possible reasons. Even if the third one is hilarious or ridiculous. You know, that, that's okay. You won't lose marks for that. But you may gain marks if it has some validity. Um, what else is easy on this? Two advantages of EU uh, to the Ireland of EU membership. Um, so there, you could say it helps bring money into the country, maybe or something. Uh, that's something that can be said for nearly anything. Um, or it gives us better market opportunities. Or, you know, just it's very bullshitable that question there. Um, here's one. There's three methods of written communication a business might use. Um, just think of any kind of way that humans can communicate through writing. So you could say te text messages. That um, an employer might send text messages to the employees about a certain business event. Or email or letter or... God, just think of anything that's written down and that will count. Or there might be a memo board or in the workplace where memos are put up or something. Um, and this one here is another example of one that's very guessable because the answer is kind of in the question. Explain each of the following terms on the job training and off the job training. What would you reckon, Clodagh? On the job training or off the job training? On the job training. What do they mean? Oh, <laughs> they train you on the job. Well done! That's an A in your ordinary level, leaving certificate business. I congratulate you on that. Okay. Um, Grant, so that's the short question. Just an example of how unbelievably doable they are, how nice they are. Now, with long questions as well, some of them can be quite convenient and useful. Like, easy, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> I don't know why you say convenient and useful. Um, right. Uh, I've marked off a few that... Um, Parts of them are definitely very doable without knowing much. Now, for most of these long questions, they give you a little story, and then you answer questions, some of which can be answered because the story gives you clues. Um, like this. Describe three effects of the recession on the town of Carrick using examples from the book of text. That's like a comprehension. You just use examples from the text you just read. Uh, two benefits of the show block sh oh, shop local campaign to the town of Carrick. Um, so probably that it helps support local businesses and it brings money into the town or something like that. It's like, oh God, so such a nice question. So easy. Um, and there you go. Also, this one here, part D of this question, quite doable. Um, the government increased taxes on petrol and diesel in its 2011 budget, allowing one reason for this increase in taxes and two effects of this increase in taxes. Well, one reason for it is to because the country is in recession and it needs to take money where it can. So that's one possible reason. Two effects of this increase in taxes, it pissed people off. And um, people were more economical in their use of petrol or diesel, maybe. I don't know. But it's definitely something that you could come up with some kind of answer to. And that's an important factor to keep in mind in business. That if you are panically thinking for every question, oh, I don't know this, I haven't studied it, then... Actually, I'll give this back to Clodagh now. Man, take this and point it at me. Get them. To me. I know, I know. I don't want to go on for 30 minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, in conclusion, uh, for the long questions in the business, if you think obsessively to yourself, business course, as in, how I study this, what chapter is in, what's the proper answer, that is a terrible way to approach the business exam, especially at ordinary level, um, and you're doing yourself a great disservice. If you go about it from, with every question of thinking, do I know anything about this topic in real life? This, does this relate to anything I've ever seen on TV, or anything that's happened to me or a friend in a shop, or, you know, if you take that approach to things, um, and even somebody just take the piss with it and do innovative answers when you're stuck, then you will definitely, at the very least, pass this subject. It's extremely doable, so um, it's nothing to be afraid of. And I think that's enough. We'll leave it there.